everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited about today's video because today I'm going to be doing another 24-hour readathon vlog. So it is currently the first of the year. It is January 1st of 2024 and I thought what a better way to start out the year than doing a little 24-hour readathon. So I am so excited about the TBR that I have for this video and I'm just so excited to spend a cozy day doing some readings. So let me get into talking about the TBR because I'm very excited about the TBR. I feel like I've chosen some good stuff and then we will get into it. So the first one I want to talk about is a continuation of a series that I started last year and I was really enjoying. It's just been a minute since I've picked up a book in the series and that is the Lady Trent series by Marie Brennan and I'm going to be reading Voyage of the Basilisk in this video. So I have actually already started this book. I'm currently on part two and I figured I could just kind of go from there. I love this series so much. I think it's so fun. It follows our main character who is a dragon naturalist, meaning they study dragons. And it's really sick to be honest. Like I love the more scientific approach to having dragons in a fantasy book. And I also love books with characters that are naturalists. And even though this is a high fantasy book and it's not set on earth, it still has that Regency kind of vibe to it, which I also love so much. It's very like historical fantasy, which I love. Like I just said, I made it to part two and there's like a little description of part two. And it says part two, in which we encounter a wide variety of dragons and an even wider variety of problems. And I'm so excited. So I'm definitely going to be finishing this up today and I cannot wait. Then I do have a couple of novellas on this TBR that I've been really excited to get to. The first one being something that's a little bit different for me because I think this is kind of like cozy sci-fi maybe is kind of how I've heard it described. Here is just a really delightful read which I've been very intrigued by and that is A Psalm for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers. I decided to pick this up from the library because I've been seeing a couple of people talking about it recently and I've been meaning to get to it so I figured a 24-hour readathon would be a perfect time to finally pick this up and see what I think about it. I believe this is set in like the distant future maybe on earth where like artificial intelligence has basically deserted earth like they've had enough which honestly fair and it's described as an optimistic vision of a lush beautiful world which sounds very different from like the typical you know dystopian future set kind of novels you know what i'm saying so i'm really excited about this i know a lot of people really love this so i cannot wait to see what i think of it and then the other novella that i'm going to be reading I'm so excited about because I am going to be picking up Dawn Shard by Brandon Sanderson. This is a novella in the Stormlight Archive. This comes between the third and the fourth book. I believe this is following one of the POVs that we were introduced to in the interludes in Oathbringer. So it's not following like the main characters from Stormlight, but before each different part of the book, you get a couple of interludes that kind of take a break from the main narrative and follow like different random people, essentially. And I think I really was enjoying this person's point of view. I think it was also a little bit longer than the other points of view that we were getting. So I'm excited to hear some more from them. And obviously I'm really excited about continuing Stormlight now that I've finally gotten myself to pick up and read Oathbringer. So that means the last book on this TBR, I'm certainly not going to be finishing because I also want to start Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson. This is the fourth book in the Stormlight Archive. I'm going to be holding myself accountable and actually picking this book up when I said I was going to. Because last year, after I read Words of Radiance in December, I was like, oh, I'm totally going to pick up Oathbringer in January and just like jump right into it. It'll be so easy that way. Absolutely did not do that. But I'm thinking starting this in this 24 hour readathon, because I should definitely be able to finish these three is a good way to get me to start this book and like actually read it in January. <laughs> because if you don't know, the fifth book in the Stormlight Archive comes out at the end of this year, which I'm so excited about. It comes out like early December maybe. And I really wanna read that book when it comes out. So obviously I need to read Rhythm of War ASAP. So that's what I'm going to be doing in this vlog. I'm gonna be starting it at least. And I feel like I've kind of cracked the code on reading Stormlight books to be honest. Because obviously I love these sloppy paperbacks. They're stunning beautiful actually the person that sent me this book where'd the thingy go yes porcupine <laughs> says hi katie i hope you enjoy this extraordinarily floppy book we all know i love the extraordinarily floppy books but the thing is i think reading a book this long is just really intimidating and i feel like every time i look down at the page count i'm like one page further than where i was the last time that i looked and it's just like i just do that too often so when i was reading oathbringer i picked up the ebook and i started reading it on my kindle and i loved that i was switching back and forth between the physical copy and the ebook just kind of depending on what i was feeling like reading at a given point in time and i do really like 
how light this is because I love the flappy paperbacks but they are it's like 1200 pages so it's very heavy so it's nice to have this when I don't want to hold something so heavy <laughs> I feel like I would definitely be able to achieve all of my reading plans of reading these three books and starting Rhythm of War which I'm so excited about so there we go that's the TBR. Looks a little ridiculous, but really it's not. So now that we have gone through the TBR, let's talk specifics. It is currently 8.50 and I think I'm gonna start the readathon at 9 a.m. maybe. I might wait until like 9.10 because <laughs> I do want a couple of minutes to just like chill beforehand, but 9 or 9.10 and then obviously I will go until 9 or 9.10 tomorrow and we will just see how many pages I can read in this readathon. I'm so excited. It's been a while, I think, since I've done a 24-hour readathon, at least like three two and a half months maybe, which is kind of a long time for me. So, so excited to get into this. I'm so excited about my TBR and to see what I think of all of these. I think I might also do a little bit of puzzling later while I listen to the audiobook for Voyage of the Basilisk because I love the narrator that they have for the series. She's actually one of the narrators that narrates Stormlight as well. And I just really love her voice. Like it is so good. So probably we'll do that later because I am in the middle of a puzzle and I would like to finish it. And that sounds kind of nice, kind of break things up listening to the audiobooks. So I think I'm going to be starting out with Dawn Shard though. This is like deceptively small. This is like a 250 page book. Like I know novellas are like kind of around that size, but I always expect a novella to be like 150 pages. So when I saw the page count on this, I was like, damn, because I think this is even a little bit longer than Edge Dancer, which is the other novella in this series, but I'm excited nonetheless. So I'm going to start out with this one. So that way, whenever I feel like it throughout this 24 hours, I can jump into Rhythm of War. So I'm going to get into Dawn Shard. I'm so excited. And I will talk to you guys later with a bit of an update. two hours into my readathon and I did want to stop and give you guys a quick kind of halfway update for Dawn Shard because I am really enjoying this one. I was a little bit scared going into this novella because I don't love Edge Dancer which is the novella that takes place a little bit earlier in the series because that one is following a character whose name is Lyft who is a 10 year old and like it was kind of fun it was a little bit, you know, sillier to follow Lyft around than it is to follow the other characters of the series. But I just didn't love Lyft as a character in that book. I do think I have a newfound appreciation for her, especially after reading Oathbringer. And I am very intrigued to see how she develops as a character over the course of this series. Because if you don't know, Stormlight is going to be a 10 book long series, but it's split into two arcs. So the fifth book, which is coming out in December, is the end of the first arc. And then the other five are going to be like the second arc and there's gonna be a time jump, I think. And I think Lyft is going to be a pretty major character in the second arc of Stormlight. And obviously she will be a little bit older. And I definitely am really excited to see Lyft as she's a little bit older and hopefully a little bit less annoying. So like, obviously I appreciate her character, just like some of the, she, she's all right. Anyway, this is a tangent that is not useful for anything I'm about to say about Dawn Shard. So I am currently on page 134, so I'm about halfway through it and I'm just really liking it. The character that we're following in this one, whose name is Rissen, I believe. And I'm really enjoying the extended point of view that we are getting from somebody who is obviously not a main character of the series because for the most part, all of the characters that we really follow are Alethi. So just getting anything else is always nice and I do appreciate the interludes in like the actual Stormlight books but for the most part when I get to them I'm like 
I just want to like get back into the story. But when we get them in like the dedicated novellas, I do really enjoy like what that adds to the story. And I really liked Edge Dancer for like the setting because we got to see just something a little bit different. And with this one, we're mainly set on the sea because in Rissen's point of view in Oathbringer, we saw her inherit a ship essentially. And in Dawn Shard, we are seeing her take that ship and her crew to this city. Um, I don't want to give any spoilers, but she's going on an excursion, a voyage, if you will. There's a lot of voyages happening in this readathon because I'm reading Voyage of the Basilisk, which is another person going on, like, a voyage. How many times can I say voyage? I don't know. But I'm really liking the, the seafaring nature of this story. Normally, I'm not really that into books that take place on water, but this one's kind of doing it for me. And so is Voyage of the Basilisk. So I'm like, maybe, maybe I'm just wrong about the fact that I don't like books that take place on water. I don't know. So I'm very excited to see where this is going to go. Another thing I want to mention is that this also kind of has a couple of chapters that are from Lopin's point of view. And Lopin is a member of Bridge Four. And that man is so annoying. Like he is, he's so funny and I really enjoy reading his chapters. But I know if I met this man in real life, I'd be over it so quickly. But obviously in the main series, we get to see interactions with him and like the main characters that we're following. But in this one, he's kind of like on his own with a couple of other people on this ship. And it's just kind of like, it's just so entertaining. So I'm really enjoying what he's adding to the story because we're getting this new perspective in Rissen, but we're also getting this kind of perspective that we know from Lopin and kind of the combination of that is really nice. I'm really liking it. And also in this book, I feel like we're kind of learning a little bit more about some scientific advancements that the Alethi are making. And I'm really excited to um, kind of see where things are gonna go with that. Something very tragic happened to Rissen in her chapter in Oathbringer. So kind of seeing what scientific advancements can potentially offer her was honestly really heartwarming. Like there was like this little moment that she was having, I was like, oh, I was about to start crying. Like I had tears in my eyes. It was just really nice. So as I'm sure you can tell, I'm just really liking Dawn Shard so far and I'm really excited to report that. So I'm going to finish this. I think I have like 120 pages left. I'm about halfway. So very excited to see where things are going to go. A Little bit of mystery going on as well. And I'm excited. So I'm gonna go finish it up and I will talk to you guys then. Okay, so it is about three o'clock now and I do have a couple of reading updates for you. The first one being that I finished Dawn Shard and I actually really ended up enjoying this one. Like I wasn't expecting to dislike it, but I wasn't expecting to really feel that much about it, but I thought it was really good and it was so much better than Edge Dancer. I'm very intrigued to see how the information that was kind of revealed in this book plays into the main books in the series because some things happened and I just don't fully understand how they're going to play in to like the main conflict of Stormlight but I'm really excited to kind of figure that out as I get into Rhythm of War and like the other books in the series. I also really appreciated what this did for a couple of side characters that we've already been seeing in Stormlight so far but we don't really know a ton about them because Lopin is like the main kind of side point of view that you get in this book and I think he's so funny like he is just the perfect amount of comic relief for this story and it just works really well but this novella really provides like some more insight into who they are as people and it just allows you to get to know them a little bit better 
which I also really enjoyed. And overall, I think Dawn Shard was just really intriguing. Like, I don't know what any of this means. I don't know how it's gonna connect to the main series or just the Cosmere in general, but I am very excited to figure that out. So book one for the readathon is done, and this is also my first book of 2024, which is quite exciting. Edge Dance was my first book of last year, so I just felt right that this would be my first book of this year. Moving on from that, I have picked up Voyage of the Basilisk, and I have been listening to the audiobook for a little bit while I've been working on my puzzle, and I'm very close to finishing my puzzle, which is quite exciting, but also a little sad because I don't have a, I don't think I have a puzzle to work on after this, so. And I was liking my, my puzzle audiobook combo. Like, it, guys, if you have not tried the puzzle audiobook combo, you gotta do it, honestly. Like, it's just top notch. But I have listened to about 70 pages of this book, and this is the kind of series that I really like. It's really fun. It's very chill. Like, the stakes are never really that high, and it's just a really nice read. If you liked Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, I would highly recommend you pick this series up because it's basically like same concept like person studying magical thing except this time it's dragons and it is so sick. I love the scientific nature to these stories and the way it is so well fleshed out. It makes it feel so real honestly and there are also illustrations throughout the book as well. Like I gotta <laughs> I gotta show you this one because I've been listening to this on audio but I do go back and look at the pictures obviously and this one I'm about to show you I just was not ready for. I mean just look at this. I was like, what the hell is a dragon turtle? But also, tell me more. <laughs> I do kind of feel a disconnect with our main character, Isabella. Like, I don't love her as much as I love some of my other historical fantasy naturalist girlies, you know? Like, she's no Emily Wilde. She is no Veronica Speedwell. You know, like, I love them. I just don't really feel that connection with Isabella, but I do still really appreciate her as a character and, like, how strong she is as a person. Because she has been going through it, honestly, throughout this series, but she is still, like, dead set on continuing her passion in life, which is studying dragons, and I love it so much when characters are just, like, passionate about their studies. It's so fun. But also because this series does have, like, a... Uh, Maybe it's more Victorian. I can't exactly place the historical time period it's trying to mimic. I don't know enough to make that, like, assumption. But because the series does take place in a time where there are these very rigid social constructs placed upon women, you see kind of the backlash that she faces for being a woman in STEM, basically. And it sucks. It's awful. I like that that's put in here, but I also kind of feel a disconnect from those things that are happening because the story is told in a way where it is Isabella telling you this story, like, much later in her life. Like, in this book, I think she's almost 30, but I get the feeling that she's much older as she is, like, recounting the things that have happened to her. And I like that in some aspects, but I do feel just a general disconnect to the things that are happening. Like, I really like this series a lot, but I just don't love it as much as I feel like I could. It's just interesting and a little disappointing, but I still really love it. I just feel like this series has so much potential that it could be reaching, but it doesn't quite. But again, if you really like Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, I think you will like the scientific aspect to this series, which I also love so much. So I'm going to continue to listen to the audiobook for this and continue to finish up my puzzle, which I'm very excited about. My snowman is almost done. I'm also gonna be snacking on my last package of Christmas candy. Very sad times, I know. But the Very Cherry Jelly Beans, top tier jelly beans, honestly. <laughs> So I'm going to finish up my puzzle. My snowman is almost done. After that, I don't know what I'm gonna do because I think I'm gonna have like a decent amount of this left. So I'll probably just pick it up physically. I think my general plan for today is to spend the rest of my time after I finish this reading Rhythm of War and then tomorrow in like the small bit of time that I have in the morning, I will pick up a song for the wild build. So those are the general plans for the readathon. But for now, I'm gonna go finish my audiobook. <laughs>
it is 7 p.m. now, but I do have exciting news because I did just finish Voyage of the Basilisk and I really enjoyed it overall. The series is just so charming and I do really love it. I know I had some critiques on it earlier, but overall it's just really fun. It's like a light academia, high fantasy kind of situation. I do think this series is not for everybody. I feel like a good marker really is if you like Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, pick this book up or this series up. But if you didn't like that book, I don't think I'd recommend this. It's a little bit slow, but it definitely has like the same vibes as Emily Wilde. So obviously I love that book. It was one of my favorite books last year. So I love this series as well. As I said earlier, Isabella is like telling the story of some of her expeditions from a later point in her life. So she does like allude to some things that have happened and I am very excited to get to those. So that's kind of an aspect where the narration style really shines. It keeps you kind of engaged and curious about what is going to happen in the rest of the series. So definitely we'll be picking up the fourth one very soon. What's it called? Um, In the Labyrinth of Drakes, I think. I'm really excited about it. And one of my goals for this year is to finish this series. So really excited that I started out with this one, second book of 2024. And this is actually on my 2024 TBR. So can we all get a round of applause for me for already being one book in on my TBR for the year? I'm going to assume you clapped, so thank you. So just really fun, very adventurous, and I love the adventurous vibe of this story because you're following Isabella as she's going on all of these different expeditions to like research dragons essentially, and that does lead to her getting in some predicaments with the people of like the places that she is visiting, which are always very entertaining and you get to kind of see her learn about a new culture and it's just really well written in my opinion. So there's that. I think I'm like 500 pages in now on my readathon because Dawn Shard's like 250 pages and I think I've read about 270 pages of this book maybe. So I'm very pleased with that, but it's time to jump into my next book. Obviously, I'm very excited about it because I'm going to be picking up Rhythm of War. So I am so excited. Winnie is excited too. I think you can see her little paw back here. Oh, you're so cute. I wish you could see her. She's so cute. And this is actually another book that is on my TBR for the year. So I'm already so proud of myself. Like I really just want there to be one year where I actually read every book on my TBR. And I don't know if that's gonna be this year, but I'm certainly going to do my best. So I'm getting started early. Already read one of them. It's time to read another one. So I'm gonna hop into Rhythm of War and I will probably give you guys an update in a little bit. It is currently 8.30. I have 40 minutes of my readathon left. We'll talk about that in a second. But first, I did want to give you guys an update on Rhythm of War because I've read like kind of a decent amount of it. Not as much as I was hoping to have read, but it's still good because I'm on page 162, so I am like pretty happy about that. But before I like get into my thoughts on this, last night, I fell asleep at like 9.30, which is just sad. I, I don't even know. Like I was just sitting there reading my book, having a fine time. And then I was like, I am so tired. 
So I laid down and I don't know what I was expecting to happen, but next thing I knew it was like two in the morning. So a little bit of a fail. I was really hoping to read more of Stormlight last night so I could read all of this this morning before my readathon ended, but that has not happened. I've been up since seven and I've just been reading some more of Rhythm of War. So I thought I could give you my update on this first. So I'm really liking Rhythm of War so far. Obviously I'd be really sad if I wasn't liking it so far, but there are just some things that are happening that are making me so sad for just one character specifically. And this, <laughs> This man's been going through it for the whole series and he's just continuing to go through it. And it's just, I just feel so bad. But I do really appreciate the exploration of mental health. In this series specifically, Brandon Sanderson is like, no, every character is gonna be going through it in their own way. They're all dealing with it in very interesting ways. One of them specifically, she's having like a whole identity crisis. It's very intriguing. How, how that's all going, but the character that I'm talking, oh my God, it's just, it's just bad. It's bad time. But I feel like while this series does have those moments of the characters just absolutely going through it, I do think it is kind of offset with a little bit of humor, which I really appreciate. I think it's a really good balance because it's not like funny, but there are just moments of levity throughout the series and I do really appreciate that and that's why I like the series so much because I feel like the characters on their own are just exceptional and the interactions that they have with each other are like my favorite parts. I love seeing all of like our main points of view less like talking and interacting and bickering back and forth like it's really fun but it also does have those like gloomy times throughout the series as well. And I think it's a good balance. But so far in this book specifically, Syl is caring. Like I love her so much. Scenes of her bickering back and forth with Kaladin are my favorite scenes in this series because their dynamic is just so funny. But also she just cares so much about him and seeing how their like relationship has developed over the course of the series has been so lovely and I, I love both of them so much. And I just love all the characters in this series. Like they're all great. Well, actually, no, there are some characters that piss me off for sure. One for sure. I hate that man so much, but we don't have to talk about him. But the characters are just so good. And I've really been enjoying in this book, getting to see more of Navani, who is kind of like a scholar adjacent. She's not actually a scholar, but she's very like into the sciencey things that are going on in this world. And we've been getting more points of view from her, which I'm really enjoying because it does dive into the more like scientific side of everything that's going on. And I'm really enjoying that. But aside from that, I feel like I don't have a ton to say about it yet. I'm definitely very, I'm very excited, but I'm also a little bit scared. Sorry, the sun is like very in my face right now. I'm excited, but I'm also a little bit scared to see where things are gonna go in this book because I feel like it's all gotta get so much worse before it gets better. And yeah, so I'm not that far into it yet. Literally 160 pages in. I don't think I'm gonna be reading any more of this in this readathon, but I'm probably gonna go read more of this when the readathon's over because I'm so excited to be back in a book from Stormlight. It's been like a week since I finished Oathbringer, but every now and then I'm like, I kind of miss it. <laughs> I kind of miss being in the Stormlight world. So this is great. So there's how it's going with Stormlight so far. So I actually, now that I've filmed all of that, I only have 30 minutes left of my readathon, but I really want to start and finish A Psalm for the Wild Bill because I'm so excited about this because I feel like I'm really gonna like it. I see a lot of people really enjoy it. So I feel like Maybe I will. I'm just so intrigued and I really want to read it. So I'm thinking might add a little bit of an extension <laughs> onto my 24 hours so I can like start and finish this. I don't think this will take me very long to read at all. And I'm so sad that I went to sleep so early last night. So I hope you guys don't mind a bit of an extension so I can start and read this book. So I'm going to do that. I will talk to you guys afterwards. I'm so excited. Also, obviously I need to point out my shirt. <laughs> I got a Twilight shirt for Christmas and I've been wearing it constantly. It's just like the, the image from the movie poster, but I was so excited about it. And obviously I need to share my excitement with you guys. So um, that mini tangent aside, now it's time to get into this.
so it is a little bit later. I finished this book like an hour ago, but it's like noon now. So a little bit past my 24 hours, but like we don't have to talk about it, okay? But I did just finish A Psalm for the Wild Built and I really enjoyed this. I still don't think that cozy fantasy and sci-fi is really my thing. I just feel like not enough happens in it. And like that's the point of like the cozy fantasy sci-fi, but I always just want there to be like a little something more to it that even this book didn't have. But I feel like the sentiment of this book and the characters that we're following really do make up for that lack of just something. I don't even know. But I really do love and appreciate the overall sentiment of this book because you're following a character who they have like an average life. It's not terrible. It's not like amazing. But in the beginning of the book, our main character Dex has like a job in the city and they want to leave. Like they've had enough. They're just feeling really tired all the time and they just want a change. So they decide to leave that job and kind of go become a traveling tea monk, which honestly sounds lovely <laughs> because basically a traveling tea monk goes from town to town and listens to other people's problems and serves them tea in return, basically, which obviously is delightful. And in the beginning, Dex is really enjoying that and kind of getting something out of it. But as time wears on, they're kind of running into the same issue that they were in the city where they just feel tired and they don't understand like what their purpose is in life. And this book is kind of validating the fact that you don't need a purpose in life and like it's fine to just live and just be, which is just a really nice and validating thing to hear. So as the book progresses, Dex decides that they want to go on like a journey of sorts and just get away from humanity, leave it all, run away to the wilderness essentially. So they start journeying to this far off place in the mountains and they're going to just kind of see what happens on this journey. But in the very beginning, as soon as they start setting off, they run into kind of the other main character that is in this story, who is a robot. And its name is Moss... It's called a Mossbot. What's its name? Mosspad? Am I losing it? Mosscap. I am losing it. His, his name is Mosscap. I literally, I finished this an hour ago. I should not be forgetting names, but here we are. First of all, look at Mosscap on the cover of this book. So cute. Oh my god. The fact that it's playing with the butterflies, I just think it's so lovely. And I, I love the friendship that blossoms between the two of them. It's just so, it's just so nice because obviously they're so different. In this world, robots and humans like used to live like in the same place. Like the robots were being overworked in the factories that humans had originally like built them for. And one day the robots just like peaced out and left humans and there hasn't been any like contact between the two for a really long time. So Dex and Moss Caps like going on this journey is like, you know, the first time that humans and robots have truly interacted in a really long time. So obviously they both have like a very different view of the world, but through them like talking and getting to know each other more, they both kind of get something out of hearing the other one's view on the world. Because if you're a robot, they're like, you know, you don't need to do anything in life. You can just go watch stalactites grow for like 30 years if you want to. And like, it's all good. The way that the general themes of the story are presented in that way, I think it's genius, honestly. And I really like the way that this book is written. And it was just lovely, to be honest. It just wasn't quite there for me, but I still really enjoyed it, you know? And I know there's another book, I think, in this series, which I do really want to pick up and read. I'll probably borrow that one from the library as well. I'm really glad that I decided to pick this one up. I also feel like I've been looking for more sci-fi recently, so I've been wanting to try, like, just different types of sci-fi, and this is definitely, like, not the typical sci-fi that I would think of, so it was just nice to try something different. Really liked the message. It was really good. And if you want something that's just like comforting, I'd recommend this. So that is the end of the video. But before we go, I do want to take a moment to update my reading journal spreads, which I'm so excited about because obviously I have not gotten to use them yet. And I've read three books in this vlog. So I wanted to update them with you guys and I'm excited. And then I will come back and kind of give a wrap up on everything. So let's do it.
been updated and it is time for me to end the vlog and give a quick recap on the things that I read. So I ended up finishing three books. They're all pretty short but I've been meaning to read all these books and I really enjoyed them. So the first one obviously I finished is Dawn Shard and I think this is my favorite of the three that I completed. I'm shocked to be honest. I just didn't think I would really enjoy a novella in the Stormlight series that much, but it was good. I really liked it. Then I also finished A Voyage of the Basilisk. Again, I really love this series. It's so fun. And obviously I just finished A Psalm for the Wild Built. And I also read 160 pages of Rhythm of War, which honestly might be my biggest accomplishment for the vlog. <laughs> Just because I'm shocked that I actually started it, to be honest. So I am so really happy with the reading that I got done in this 24 hour readathon. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching it because I really enjoyed filming it. Obviously, if you did enjoy, I would love to know down below have you read any of these books? Let's chat about them. I would love to. I really enjoyed all of these. So obviously, I'd love to chat about them. Also, before I go, I did want to thank everybody over on my Patreon. If you're ever looking for more content from me, I do have that always linked down below. We do some fun stuff over there, such as a monthly monthly buddy read and I am so excited about the January buddy read because I'm going to be reading more Brandon Sanderson because it was chosen that we would read Tress of the Emerald Sea which I'm so excited about so really hope I love it. If you guys want to watch the spoiler filled reading vlog you could join the Patreon if you are so inclined but aside from that I think now I'm gonna let you guys go so thank you so so much for watching this video and hanging out with me for this 24-hour readathon and I will see you all in my next one.